In this lesson, you will learn how to find the unit rate of a ratio. Our goal is to apply and extend previous understanding of ratios to find a unit rate. In our previous tutorials, we looked at ratios, and we also looked at finding the unit rate using a diagram. So, how do I find the unit rate? Well, there's three steps we always need to remember. First, we need to identify the ratio. Then, we need to identify the units of measure. Is it miles per gallon or gallon per mile? Next, we need to solve by converting the ratio to a unit rate, which means a denominator of 1. So, if I have 30 miles in 2 gallons, I need to convert something like that to a unit over 1. Of course, you divide 30 by 2 and you would get 15 in that case. So that's the unit rate, which would be, in this case, 15 miles per gallon or in one gallon. Remember, a ratio is a comparison of two or more quantities. Make sure you're taking a minute to pause and write down all three of your steps so that you can check off as you're going along. Another th important thing to include is that a ratio can be one of three things. It can be part to part, it can be a part to total comparison, or it can be rates. And in this tutorial, we're really going to focus on rates. Let's look at our first example, fall leaves. After raking our tree's leaves, 24 hours later, our healthy tree shed 12,000 leaves. How many leaves did it shed per hour? So here we have a ratio. In this case, it's a rate. So we have 12,000 leaves in 24 hours. What I want to know is, well, how many leaves in one hour. So we're, here we have a ratio comparison. So I know that for every 12,000, I have 24 hours. I need to know how to get that to one hour. Well, hopefully you understand, how do I get from 24 to one? I can divide. And what do I divide by? In this case, I divide by 24. So I can divide 12,000 by 24 to find my unit rate. It's important to note that in this case, I'm dividing 12,000 by 24, which of course a fraction is always a division problem. Similarly, a unit rate is usually a division problem or a multiplication if you're expanding it. So, in this case, we can, of course, say, well, how many times can 24 go into 1? It can go in 0 times. It can go into 12 0 times. It can go into 120 5 times. And 5 times 24 is 120. Gives me a remainder of 0. Bring down my 0. It can go in 0 times. It can go into 0 again, 0 times. Don't forget those extra zeros because those are a very important part of the division problem. So we of course know that that is 500 leaves in one hour. So my correct answer is 500 leaves per hour. So that's my unit rate. Let's look at another example. Let's look at a pulse problem. I listened to Layla's pulse for two minutes and 20 seconds. Sorry, I just fixed that. It should have been 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It was 200 beats during that time. What was her beats per minute? So, looking at the pulse, we know that it was 200 beats in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, I need to, of course, convert that to minutes. So I can first convert it all to seconds and then divide it by 60 at the very end, or I can say, well, 2 minutes and 30 sec uh, seconds is what fraction of a minute? Well, that would be 2 and a half. So that would be 
200 over two and a half minutes is my ratio. I need to know how many beats it is in one minute. Again, how do I get from two and a half to one? I would divide by two and a half. So 200 divided by two and a half and of course remembering our decimal rules it becomes 2000 divided by 25 because we multiplied both sides by 10 in order to get rid of our decimal and we have a problem that we could easily figure out 8 times 25 is 200 gives me a remainder of 0, bring down my 0 80 so her pulse was 80 beats per minute. Again, unit rate. I need to find my total over one. Let's look at one final example. Pasta prices. A store sells the same pasta in two ways. 10 pounds of bulk pasta for $12 or two pounds of packaged pasta for $2.98. Which one is the better buy? Well, sometimes common mistakes in this problem fall one of two ways. Sometimes students will see, well, $2.98 is cheaper, so that must be a better buy. So that's a common mistake. Another common mistake is that students will always assume that because you're buying in bulk, and adults actually do that often too, because you're buying in bulk, that you're getting a better deal. Well. In order to find out if it's a better deal, we really have to find out how much it is per pound and figure out which one is cheaper. How do we do that? Well, we know that $12 will give me 10 pounds. So that is how much for one pound? And I'm just going to... So how much per pound? Well, how do I get from 10 to 1? I can divide by 10. So when I divide 12 by 10, my decimal rule, hopefully you remember from previous tutorials, that would be $1.20 per pound. Now looking at our next example, we have $2.98 for 2 pounds. And again, I need to say, well, how much is it for 1 pound? I can divide by 2, and that would give me $1.49 per pound. So in this case, 10 pounds of bulk pasta for $12 is my better buy. So 10 pounds for $12 is the better buy. So you can see how unit rate can really help you out, especially when you're comparing prices. Next time you're shopping with your parents, take a look to figure out which one you should buy. Now it's your turn. In these problems, I want you to find the unit rate. Biking. You biked 68 miles in four days. On average, how much did you bike per day? In your next problem, you're going to figure out an average speed. It takes you 1 minute and 40 seconds to walk 550 feet. What is your average speed per minute? Remember to think about how you're going to convert 40 seconds to minutes. I'm going to give you a hint. Remember, there are 60 seconds in a minute, so it shouldn't just be 1.4. And last but not least, cost. Which is the better buy? Two batteries for $1.50? or six batteries for $4.80. Go ahead and take a minute to pause the video and figure these out all on, all on your own. In this lesson, you've learned your knowledge of ratios in order to find the unit rate. We have applied and extended previous understandings if you're still confused, make sure you're going back to previous tutorials and revisiting those. Some common rates, remember, are miles per gallon, price per pound, or per unit of measure, and miles per hour. Those are some of the most common you'll ever see. And whenever you see those, 
Remember, you're probably looking at a problem that deals with unit rate. Now I think Ms. Salvador has probably prepared you a lot for shopping this season. So now it's your turn to go out and find some really good deals on unit rate. Another great job today.